Contact a Family is a UK charity providing information and support to families with disabled children, whatever their disability. This podcast is an account of a mother's experience of having a disabled child. My name is Rachel. I have four children and my youngest is called Saskia who is 11 years old. Now she has a condition called polymicrogyria and also we've discovered recently that she could also have Marfan's. The polymicrogyria is quite a rare disorder. She has delayed learning. She has mild cerebral palsy, epilepsy as well, which has been quite severe. She's still in nappies and doesn't talk. She seems to go ah, 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 ah all the time. And also she has ADHD tendencies and autistic tendencies now the ADHD tendencies are really hard work those are worse because when she was having really severe seizures she was going flat on the floor at warp speed the Marfans is basically physically protein called fibrillin which is missing or they have lack of it and it's very hard to pick up in children but physiologically in a skeleton and that they start having like a curvature of the spine the hands look like shovels um, very long fingers and And it's apparently about the connective tissues. So the connective tissues don't work properly because they haven't got that protein in. So that affects all the major organs. Also, the top of the roof of her mouth is very, very high. When did you first find out that Saskia might have some extra needs? She was 18 months old. Every time she sucked the milk, it seemed to go all the way down her. And then she ended up with like really sore patches all over her body and everything. She was running around screaming. And then she started with the seizures and she was just dropping where she was. And it was really, really scary. And because her developmental rate started slowing down, that was when we started really worrying. So she went to the child development unit and that's where they started to assess her. Everything's so slow. The processes, getting MRI scans and everything, just take far too long in my opinion and what's been the most difficult time since Saskia was born it was four years ago and it was when her epilepsy got out of control and I tried to sort of get it back under control but then the doctors weren't working together and it's just continuously fighting all the time to try and get people to work with you and I feel the NHS need to work with parents now County Council are starting to work, but they need to work with us. How did it feel for you when Saskia got her first diagnosis? Well, they just tell you and then leave you to it. You don't get any information whatsoever. You have to find it out for yourself. I felt vulnerable, lonely and very, very upset. And the vulnerable part is the worst. The loneliness and the fact that I was on my own as well and I didn't have a partner, so I had nobody to share it with. And what did the doctors tell you about how Saskia might develop? Well, they didn't. They just said, this is what she has and we're excited because it's, you know, a genetic thing. And then they leave you to it and it's like they don't get in contact with you and you seem to be left to it for such a long time. Oh, right, we know what it is, but we don't know what the prognosis is because it's quite a rare disorder. So I signed up to a a polymicrogyria site and it's just an American one. There isn't a British one. And on there, they're all so different and they have a lot more support over there for this disorder. Over here, there's nothing. So what are the things that have changed most as a result of Saskia's needs? I think it's a change within myself. I seem to fight more for things, but there are extreme highs and extreme lows. When you're you're fighting, sometimes you burn yourself out and you need a holiday. You need to look after yourself because if you don't look after yourself, who else can? And who can look after your child because the services out there are getting worse. Even though they said they had this money available, I really haven't seen it. I haven't had anything extra. I've still had to fight tooth and nail for every single thing that I need and want for not just me to make it better for me so I'm better for my child, but for the siblings, for her. And you just feel so guilty about wanting the best for your child because you're asking for handouts. Because I'm being a single parent, I am on um, benefits. I'm also on carer's allowance. Now, she does get direct payments but it's only seven hours a week and that isn't enough half the time because she does need two carers. So, you know, when they have complex needs, it starts getting really, really hard work trying to take them anywhere is is an absolute nightmare because people are just not prepared for, you know, their needs, especially when they kick off and lie down and don't want to move, you know, that's the hardest. So could you describe a typical day for me? 
a typical day, oh my goodness, it could be a nightmare. So I try to have a positive frame of mind, get all smiley when she's there. But if any routines change, then she will kick out and land out. So, you know, I can get a black eye or sometimes if she hasn't got an all over suit on, she can take a nappy off in the night because she doesn't like having it on and then she spread the contents all over the place. But um, taking her anywhere, I have to plan in advance like shopping or anything like that. People know her now, so they do accommodate her. I would like to take her places where they don't know her, you know, and be able to go back. It's very hard to go into cafes because you're so messy when she's eating and you get looked at and you get tutted at. And really, in a typical day, it's just getting acceptance off other people, which doesn't happen. Round here now, it's starting to, but I want that to be across the board. I want children with all disabilities to be integrated a lot better than what they are. I want them to just be a natural form of society and it doesn't seem to be happening right now. But I'm hoping that it will and I'm going to push for that. Apart from the physical support that I need, I need mental support as well. I need somebody there to talk to and sometimes it just isn't there. Also, having the surroundings safe for uh, my own home has been a fight. Holidays. I want to be able to have a holiday without having a holiday to, to recover from the holiday. I want to be able to take her away. There's all sorts of support that you need that you don't realise, you know, especially when you're trying to travel and move around the county or, say, like going to a, a soft play area or something like that. She's 11 now, so she'll soon grow out of those, so I won't be able to take her. There'll be nowhere to take her. A beach, I have to take her to a beach where nobody goes. So it's the high level of support is making sure you ring before you get there. So they know what to encounter instead of, you know, they're coming over and asking you to leave. And what type of information have you found is available about Saskia's condition? Only on the internet. That's the only place that I've found and it's very little. And it's on a Yahoo groups and it was the American one and that's the only one I've found. How did you find out in the first place about Contact a Family? I think you get leaflets, they're all over the place. Have Contact a Family provided you with any support? Absolutely loads recently. With this Aiming High agenda, they've sort of set up these steering group and the conferences and stuff like that. But people need to be part of it because we need everybody else to like take over and, and go to the different meetings with professionals to change the disability services that we know for the better. Is there any advice that you'd like to pass on to other parents? Don't give up. What you need to do as a parent is to have your voice. Even though you have one of those days where you feel like you don't want to say anything, you've had enough, get out there and just say, excuse me, please listen. As a parent, you do know what you're talking about and just remember that you know you're the best. The Contact a Family Helpline can provide information and support on many of the points raised in this podcast. The advisors on our free phone helpline can assist with issues around benefit entitlement, navigating the NHS and issues around education. We can also locate local and national support groups, provide medical information and link parents whose children have rare disorders. In addition, we produce a wide range of publications. For further information, visit our website at www.cafamily.org.uk or call our free phone helpline on 0808 808 3555. For video interviews with parents, visit our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash CA family. This recording was made in June 2010. The views expressed in this podcast are for information purposes only. The material is in no way intended to replace professional medical care or attention by a qualified practitioner. Condition symptoms may vary in type or severity amongst individuals. This podcast is to demonstrate the personal views and experience of this family only. For a approved medical information about this condition, see the Contact a Family website at www.cafamily.org.uk or contact your doctor.